Today I've got a really nice non-linear system of two differential equations that I would like to solve. But maybe before I get into that, I'd like to point out that I found this on the math.stack exchange. So this is the number of the post if you'd like to check it out as well. Although that being said, I think this is a fairly standard technique for this type of problem. Another thing that I'd like to point out is I've got a full course in differential equations over on my second channel, which is all focused on learning mathematics called Math Major. I have lecture videos and problem set videos, and in total there are about 50 videos, and this covers an entire course in differential equations. Furthermore, if the Patreon gets to a certain level, I'm going to demonetize or take the ads off of all of the videos on this second channel, just to continue to break down the barriers for math learning on the internet. Okay, so now that that spiel is done, let's maybe go ahead and look at the differential equation or the system of differential equations that we are interested in. So we're going to assume that x and y are both functions of t, and we'll use the notation x dot is equal to the derivative of x with respect to t, and y dot is likewise the derivative of y with respect to t that should be. Who put a comment there before I fixed it? Okay, so the system of differential equations is x dot equals negative y times x squared plus y squared, and y dot equals x times x squared plus y squared. And anytime you have a nonlinear differential equation, let alone a system of nonlinear differential equations, you know that there's probably a trick that will allow us to come up with a fairly simple solution. And that's because the general theory of systems of nonlinear differential equations is a very difficult general theory. And it's very easy to write down these types of differential equations that have no simple solution. Okay, so what's the trick here? I think our big motivation is that we've got x squared plus y squared in both of these terms. And that motivates me to make a change of variables into polar coordinates. So let's do that. We'll set x equal to r times cosine theta, and we'll set y equal to r times sine theta. And although we won't use this explicitly, it's a nice exercise in the product rule and the chain rule to find the derivative of x with respect to t and the derivative of y with respect to t in terms of these new polar functions. And in fact, what we have is x dot is equal to r dot times cosine theta. So that's taking the derivative of r, and then we'll have minus theta dot times r times sine theta. So notice I had to use the chain rule there. I took the derivative of cosine and it became negative sine. Then I had to take the derivative of the inside function because with this setup, it's important to realize that r is a function of t and theta is also a function of t. Okay, so maybe as a little exercise, you guys should write down what uh, y dot is in terms of this sort of expansion. Like I said, our trick will not rely on explicitly writing that out. Instead, what we will use is the fact that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and the fact that the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And so that's just standard rules for converting polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates and back again. And now we can take derivatives of these equations thinking about uh, implicit derivative rules. Okay, so this is going to give us 2x times x dot plus 2y times y dot using the chain rule equals 2r times r dot. Now clearly we can divide by 2, that'll give us r times r dot is equal to x times x dot plus y times y dot. But check it out, y dot and x dot are suspiciously similar. 
they both have this x squared plus y squared. This one is attached to a minus y and y dot is attached to an x. So let's see if that provides us any simplification. So we'll have x times x dot, but x dot is negative y times x squared plus y squared, but that's negative y times r squared. Then y times y dot will give us y times, and then this will be x times r squared similarly. But look at this, this is negative xy r squared and this is positive xy r squared. So that's gonna cancel down to zero. So what does that tell us? We have r times r dot is equal to zero. So that splits into two cases, either r is equal to zero or r dot is equal to zero. But notice that if r is equal to zero, then r dot is also equal to zero. So any way you put this, we get that r dot is equal to zero. But if r dot is equal to zero, that's what kind of function has the derivative that is zero? And that's just a constant function. So we have r is a constant. I'll call this constant maybe a. So there, we know what r is. It is just this constant a. So that's good news. Now we're gonna play a similar game over here with this tangent theta equals y over x. Again, we get that just because sine over cosine is equal to tangent. Okay, so let's take the derivative of both sides. So the left-hand side will give us secant squared of theta times theta dot. So that's using the chain rule. And now over there on the right-hand side, we'd probably like to use something like the quotient rule. So that will give us y dot times x minus x dot times y over x squared. Okay, nice. But now we know y dot and x dot from this situation up here. So that's gonna give us, let's see, x squared times r squared. But notice r squared is just a squared. So just to reiterate what happened there, I took this, y dot and I expanded it into x times x squared plus y squared. But x squared plus y squared is r squared, but r is this constant a from our previous work. And now we'll do a similar expansion over here. We know x dot is equal to negative y times a squared for the same sort of reason. So let's notice those minus signs cancel and we get plus y squared times a squared. And now let's notice that this is all over x squared. But before we put x squared there, let's maybe do a little bit of a calculation which will allow us to maybe streamline this process. Okay, so let's notice that x is r cosine theta. That means x squared is r squared, which is a squared cosine squared theta. So that means that we can replace x squared with a squared cosine squared theta. So let's do that, a squared cosine squared theta. But that cosine squared is in the denominator, so we could bring it to the numerator and call it secant squared theta. So we're left with something like that. And now we can cancel the secant squared theta from both sides, so that's cool. We can pull the a squared out of the numerator here and cancel with the denominator. So that's like doing something like this. a squared cancels this one and this one, and we're left with theta dot is equal to x squared plus y squared, which recall x squared plus y squared is the constant a squared. So we have theta dot, in other words, the derivative of theta with respect to t is a constant a squared. But if that's a constant a squared, then we know theta is equal to a squared times t plus b where b is some other constant. And that's just by taking the antiderivative of both sides. Okay, so now putting this together, we've got r is equal to this constant, theta is equal to that linear function. Now we can plug that into our functions for x and y, and we'll have x is equal to a times cosine a squared t plus b, and then y is equal to a times sine 
of a squared t plus b. That I think is a pretty nice final solution here. Now I've done several other differential equations type videos on the channel. Um, if you'd like to check one of them out, one should be on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop.